Hi everyone, my video today is inspired by a camellia called Paradise Belinda. I'm working on an A3 smooth 300 GSM paper by Arch and colours are Winsy Yellow, uh, Bright Rose, Rose Matter and Indethrin. They are all Winsor & Newton except for the bright rose which is a whole bin colour. So this will be rather experimental because I'm going to be working with a small spray bottle. Um, it's a beautiful little bottle that is easy to use and I'll see what the results are going to be as I actually start to paint. First off I'll start to draw up something. Um, I plan to start with the centres of the roses and actually get those on the paper and then see what I can do after that with the spray bottle and um, it'll either turn out wonderfully or it'll be just something that I'll have to rework later. I've added a small amount of Australian red gold to the colour scheme just to get a little bit of depth in the yellow otherwise it's very very plain yellow and you won't see a difference in anything. I've gone closer to the actual flowers so that you can see the fantastic centres in the flowers and so I'll move that aside and just that way and just start to work uh, with a rigger with Winsy Yellow and a little bit of Australian Red Gold just to tint it slightly. And I'll start out at the edge of the, the, the short edge and start to come out from the centre. Now normally I'd move that around, I'll just put the camera back out. Normally I'd move it around so I've got a better angle to work with it. But I'm going to actually work this way today and come down into that centre and start to get some of those stamens that are just in the front of that. And that goes around in behind so it actually has to look like it's coming up around. And some of those have the little ends on them. So I'm just going to put those on a little bit darker just for effect. Put some shorter, put some longer and just start to get the look of the actual stamens going around and out to the outside edge. So I won't overdo it at this stage, just sort of get some on there and then start working around. Just put a little bit of colour around the bottom of it to anchor it and then start in the back. So I've gone to the front first and then I'll have to actually organise the back to go around behind there and look like it's missing it. Okay so they'll come out around here, you'll get some out around there. They're pretty straight, they're not that bent or twisted, they're not exactly all together, they're short ones, longer ones. That'll come down in behind those and I'm just trying to get the shape of the actual stamens. Okay, so then I'll start to work in the browner ends on them just to get that look of where they are, otherwise you can't see it all. And just mixing the colour on the brush to get just light and dark. So all up here is the major part of them coming around the flower. As I said this is experimental. I mean I'm not sure exactly how it's going to turn out. Some are winners, some are not. Okay so I've started to get the centre together but on the centre they have those little sections of flower bud that's actually just started to attach to some of these and they stick out they're more like that on the end of these and so every now and again you'll get one that's got a red section on it so I'll just get that on. Uh, if I wanted this over the top I would have had to have masked out some of it but I'm not going to that much effort to do that I'll just see how this works to start with otherwise I'll start again. So I've just exaggerated that red so that there's just more on there than there normally would be and so that'll be the center. I'll just bring some of the red down around the bottom of it just to get it to head in that direction. 
and maybe even some darker ones in the foreground of it just to make it look like it's thicker that there's more here coming over that and it's a mix of all those centers together just the shape okay that'll do now we'll see what's going to happen here if it's going to work or not going to work so i'm going to get a um, sable brush a softer brush that holds more water and then see if i can get that to go out with the spray bottle so i've got the pink bright rose a little bit of rose matter in it just to tame it down a bit it's quite a strong color and i'm just going to get that onto the paper as if there's petals around this and the petals would be coming out from around and so i'm just going to go out around here and just get the look of a petal coming around another petal over here they sort of have a bit of a heart sort of shape in them and just some petals that'll do part of a petal that's not a real petal again more paint and then i'll hit it with the spray bottle this can come out from behind that you get a petal out that way another petal there some coming back around and so now i've created something like the flower that can come up to there and then out around so that one could be folded over don't try and paint too much of it if you paint too much it won't look really really soft and so now i'm going to hit it with a spray bottle oops i was going to hit the spray bottle out to the edges even the center can run slightly now that'll keep running so i'll just let it do its own thing and start on the next flower and the next flower will be over here and so that'll keep going out so i'm not going to worry too much but you've got the center in there the light in it and then this is the next one so the next one will come up around here somewhere um, and so i'll work the flowers so i've got a one two three sort of organization of the flowers to make it into a realistic artwork and so the same thing um, i'll still start with the front ones because i found that was the only way that you could see and so after i've done one i can let loose and just start to paint center some of the brown parts of that pollen on the end of those then the other side to it which is the brighter yellow could have some darker brown on the opposite so i've put the darker brown on here so that you'll see that out through there you'll see some larger ones out round make sure it looks like it's coming oops around around the actual center as i said they're not very um turned and so then the yellow will go on the ends of those that will make it look like it goes around there's bugs crawling over the paper go away and then while it's damp with this brush i'll just wash it slightly put some of the red on and get some of these petals on okay so then i'll start with the flower again bright rose rose matter um, this one i'll do a little bit differently i'll try and get the petals to have some turn on them coming back in behind that'll just stay in there in the wet this one here can come out this way 
I need a bit more colour on my brush. Just simply putting the outside edges on this. Can't see much over there, so I'll just come in here. Just get some shorter petals over the back. I think it looks nice with it surrounded rather than just the... But that was the main aim of what I actually saw in the photograph to start with that interested me was the stamen sitting out. But I'm going to have other painting here as well, so... I guess I better get something out there just a little bit. Just get some petals out as if it's gone away. That'll make it go away. And then the water bottle. Don't spray the flowers. Oops. Got to be very definite with the spray, otherwise it just does a blob. Don't like the shape of this as much as the other one, so I'm just going to play with that shape. Now I can put the stamens back on. This one got sprayed a little bit, but anyway, I'll come down here and go out a little bit further and start again. This one I'll try and get more open. And I'll be painting into that wet paint there too, that should be interesting. So I'll come around the whole center, come back around at your face. Make some taller exaggerate it now now that I've got the idea of what the shape is now's the time to just start painting get some dark in the middle And they don't just go around the edge, they come in short, they come in all the way around here, there's thousands of them. And then the red. And that one's taken a turn for the all over the shop, but that's all right. This has got to come out from the actual center. So if I tip that up and have a look at it and see what I see, I see the petals out around the top coming in. Um, going out around here. That's a bit of a bow in the middle of it. I do. Don't get too close to the center or I'll lose it again. Put it down. It's Jumping all over the place. Don't run out of paint. That one will go up near the other one. Still wet there, so that's interesting. I wouldn't do that everywhere, I should stop that. Because then I'm trying to paint it too much. I don't want to have to paint it. I want it to paint itself. Let the brush dance. Ew. 
Tschüss. Okay, mm, still got the shape, so I'm just going to leave that one. Like this one, not too happy about that one. Anyway, keep working. So I've got three on the paper. And so I'm planning to have a design that comes down through here and around. So down through here, there's probably be something out here, but not underneath that one. You can't just put flowers underneath. That'll be the main focus. And so probably about here somewhere, there'd be another one that splits between those. So I'll start again with the center. close to the other one but that's all right don't want them all looking like they're really separate Center on the center can come back later by putting those sections back on it. Okay, back with the red. Give these other bit of a spray. See if you can improve. I'll leave that. Okay, this one's going to come out this way. Make the edges look interesting. the other one another flower I'll do another one before I spray it that'll make it a little bit more obvious won't sort of go too far out three four five um okay I'm going to actually maybe put a small one at the top here, just a bud, sort of a, a flower. Just to get that to come around, to do like an S through there. And this will be the bud. Put some green on the edge of that just to have something with it. So that's Windsor Yellow and Indetherin. Should be a light green actually because it's up with the bud, wouldn't be too dark. that mm -hmm. don't spray too much but 
I'm wanting it to be a bit lighter at the top than the bottom, so I'll just push it down. Maybe let it run down. Alright, so I'm allowing it to run down the page. where more interesting things happen. It's darker there and here, but I'm going to leave that because I've got the accents. This is really what I'm looking for, something a little bit more like that. So maybe if I just let these sit for a little bit longer and then give them a respray, that'll change them as well. And that's what I'm looking for because that one worked out really well. These will work still as well. Not sure about that one, but I like that one. All right. And this sort of work is what you see is what you get. That'll get soft colour up around there. Maybe that red can come over there as well. I'm tipping it. Tipping it quite a bit. Hmm. I like that. I like the patterns that it's doing through here. Alright, we're finally starting to get somewhere. Tipping it. It's time to actually add the background to this artwork and to basically do that I've got to find sections where I want to find the essence of the flower which has just a dip in the petal and then a cut in coming in and making the edge to the actual flower that's there, the part of the petals that's there, I could actually do that, which would make it look like you can see through some of the petals as well. I've also got a line back in here and just surrounding that so that I can make that a depth area. And so I've got to look at the edges of the actual flowers. What do I like about the edges? I like that edge but it needs something to bring in and get the shape of the flower. I do have on my phone here a section of the flowers and so I can actually refer to that as the shapes that I see in this particular camellia. And so it has a really, really uh, sharp edge coming in in some places and leaving a gap that's about that color in through there and back out to the next actual petal. So do I need to do anything up there in that edge? Probably not. So I've worked up here. I'll then move down to here and get something in between it here. And so I'm working through the artwork to see what needs edges and what doesn't. So I'm coming from here and around this area back over to here. Uh, do I need anything back into there? Probably not. Those petals look fine. I do need something here where I can come into that and get the edge back out of that one. Um, this one here, if I actually did that, I would get a turned over edge to that petal and come in back out of that. And so I've worked in through there. Um, looking at these over here, I don't have a problem with those. The, the edge that's originally made is the best edge that you'll get. It's actually more attractive than where you've lost the edges. Like down here, I've lost some edges. Also, if I come in behind that petal and back into there, I could get a better shape to that. <clears throat> and that would cause the look of a turnover in that petal, but it's just the white paper that was left originally. So coming down into here and back out, I can make the cut in through there. Um, and I don't know whether you can actually see what I'm doing, 
but I'll come in closer so that you can see that. And so now I've moved in and you can see the actual drawing of what I've actually done in through the cut-ins around to come around the flowers. And so down in through here, I probably need something in the back here, whether that flower's over the top or this flower. Whoever's over the top gets the actual um, edge to it as the prominent edge. So I'll make that one over the top. This one will go underneath. And that's about all I need to do. Possibly here there's a bit of confusion. But at some stage, it's okay to leave something as well. If you actually plan everything purposefully, then a lot of the time people get tired of looking at your work. Where I've got a bud, um, I'll just see if there's a bud on here. There's nothing really of a close bud that I can see. But the bud up here can be left. And so all I'll do is show its branch coming down through here with just a few bits off it heading up that way but I'm not going to do the whole branch up to there I'm going to leave that as if it's anonymous you can't see the exact uh, idea of how that's connecting all right so that's been drawn I'll go back out so you can see the whole artwork okay and so now I'll be coming in behind and creating that area and so what I'm going to do to start with is just wet around an area that I'm going to work, which is here. And I'll wet up to where I'm coming into that uh, edge that's there originally. And just put some water out to the edge of the page. Now what that'll do is give me the chance to shade out into that water. But when I pick up the colour to come in behind there, which is going to be green, Windsor Yellow and Indethrin, and a touch of burnt sienna and indethrin together to grey it down so now this will be quite strong so that'll go into that cut in leave some shapes in through there with the drawing come out to here and now it'll start to run i went over that edge there for the drawing and that'll start to run out into that area i did come down to here i'm not sure with the water but i'll do that and now just shapes out through there so if I wanted leaves out through here, I could leave them until later or I could come back in um, even with a palette knife and take some out. But I'm just going to let that run out and put some other colours in it. So some of the colours that could come in on the light side could be some Windsor Yellow. It'll just be like a light chartreuse now because it's a dirty yellow um, and just drop that in behind there and that'll just give me some light colour coming out through there and fade it off and just let it come out of the artwork you can push it back in um, and that'll just give me a light edge in that that's going to have leaves over it later so i'll just let that run and do its own thing so coming into the inside area here i'll put the original green in that i put in um, if i don't wet it i get stronger paint if i do wet it then I get a lighter color. So I'm not going to wet this. So I'm just going to paint into this. So again, with my darker green and a touch of the brown in it to brown it down slightly, in behind that petal, let it stop and come back in out here. So now it's in there and that's making the edge to that petal. And so if I want to stop, I just lay the brush down and push it. So then I'll come over to the other side but I'll also reload my brush because I'm painting on dry paper. So I need it to be wet enough to actually go into the paper. I can leave some light in through there if I want to. But I'd have to actually surround it by the edge of the petal there and keep working out. Now when I want to go out to the edge here, I'll then actually stop, get that edge through there, stop there, wash the brush change over to the larger brush that I had and just wet it out. And what that'll do is just stop that paint and just let it fade. So now it's going to fade out of there. And so what I'm doing is fading edges and picking edges up. I'm just getting a little bit of dark now to drop into the main part in through here. And that is really dark. That's in the indethrin. And that will make that really strong and give it some strong depth there could be just a little dent in the middle of that 
Okay, so now I'll go back to my lighter colour and keep working. So that's the Winsy Yellow and Indethrin. And come down into here and I'll join that area up. Now, if I want this brush to have a very, very strong point on it, I'll roll it on a piece of uh, tissue and then bring it in. I don't mind what that's done there. Uh, in here, I'll just come in past there. And now I get a very strong point in this brush, which is good. I'll also get some strong darks into it as well. So that's my depth colour down the bottom. don't mind that so I'll leave that and when I want to come out of here I can come out softly and I will need to come out softly because I've got nowhere to go here so that's wet the square brush drop it down come into that paint and let it out just rub sideways on it okay so I've wet that and so if I just touch it again it'll do its own thing a little bit more And that's nice how it just comes out to nothing. Okay, so coming back in now around to this edge, I've got the edge around the bottom of this one. And so because I've done so much on the edge of that one there, I think I'm going to change this here. And that's a decision I've made because that goes up that way. And I don't want that. So I'm going to take that out. And I'm going to change it and make it the opposite. Be careful where I brush that so I don't brush it into water. Okay, so I decided then that I was going to bring this in as a petal. So the petal would be there, would have the dip in it that they have. And so now I'm coming over this one and going around and out, which now has changed that. So I could even come out. I don't want to go too much further on that because that's doing okay. Um, it's soft. It's not noticeable and I'll see how it goes when I get this one in. Just get a mark in that, something that's interesting rather than just a straight edge. So it's got a pattern in through there that you'd see in through the trees. And so now I'll just go to the lighter green and get that in behind this flower here. Okay, so when I lay my brush down, I won't go too far there, I'll just show part of it, just that much of it, and then it will go to the next flower underneath. And so if I wash my brush and lay it down quick enough, I'll shade that off, and you won't see the back edge of that paint. It'll join up, but that's okay. So that's just left. Another way of actually shading something is the pointy edge of my brush is the line or the straight line or the direction, the back of my brush where I lay it down is the shading. So that can go in behind there. So now I've shaded differently. I've been behind here and I'm coming on top there. I probably could do with a little bit of dark in some of that in there. And in here it looks a bit, a bit light. So I'll just give it a couple of accents in light and dark. Okay, so I'm coming around to here now. I talk about cut-ins. And because I teach a lot, I do talk a lot. So it's something that hopefully it's for the education purposes, not just that I like to chat all the time, that that will come around that way. That will come around here and stop. Now I stop before I want something to join up. That could be the edge of another flower if there was another flower down here. So I'll make it look like that by doing just a cut 
in, into that edge and that'll leave a hard edge on the outside edge and that'll come around to the other side of this one so it'll come around to there and that's going to cut this off so I'll quickly do that wet this one out so that'll softly come out gather it up could leave some green out through there I don't care if there's any green through there and I'll use water now to join these up let that go down into some green out through there I've got yellow out through that side and this now becomes light and then you don't know what happens here so that'll finish off there and I'll leave that shape that's something interesting coming down through there as if it's going on to the next um, flower join these two up that goes underneath and so that then becomes light coming out of there and let the brush let your brushes do something for you don't try and manipulate everything to be perfect let the brush leave some lights and darks and colors coming down through okay so what I've created is the idea that it's coming down dark through here it's got some light edges it'll be lighter up the top here and coming out the bottom and then I'll actually plan a stem and then some leaves to come into here so I'll wet up into here I don't want to see the edge to that one either because that's further up so I'll wet the edge to what I actually painted here I uh, drew I drew that in through there and so that'll be in the lighter yellow green so it's just light coming in coming behind that and if I don't turn the brush I don't get the right edge I like that softness coming out of there so I'm going to get that back I'll now pick up the darker greens and drop those in and let it disappear take out my edges don't want to see any edges that stage and I'll put a little bit of dark in behind here remember they're knobbly branches as well later on I'll darken across that as well just let that run it can do its own thing I could use a little bit of I suppose to get into here just to suggest that the edge of that petals there somewhere but it is just a suggestion um, and then I'll go to the other side of that now I do turn my work a lot because I'm sort of able to do that. I'll turn this round and come back into there because as I was talking about the leading edge of my brush is that way and so I can't get over the top of my hand to do it. And so this side will be the darker side. I've gone very dark very quick. Okay, this is the darker side, a knobbly edge, just something up through there, don't know what it is come out of there and across and so I'll leave that that looks interesting that does too to a point then it needs to disappear so I'll only touch what I have to uh, where does that go it goes back into a cut in there but do I need to see that probably not I'll just come in behind it here and leave another shape so if I leave another shape there, it's almost like there's another branch coming up. Then I drop dark in behind it and that makes it really strong. But it's soft as it comes out. Okay, so now I'll turn it round and come back to what I was talking about, was to come in behind there and to create some bits and pieces. Now, I've actually got the flower, a dead flower, and some foliage just to see what the foliage looks like it's serrated it's very dark green it's almost the green that I've got in the middle here which is quite a strong um, Winsor yellow and endetherin with the darks added to it will get me something along the lines of those colors I'll also look at the, um, the trunk and grabbing a, bra a pencil I'll start to draw something I've got a little mark down there and I'm not sure what I did whether I meant it to be there or not but it won't rub out so that'll have to be in the artwork so that's where I'll sort of get to start 
and that will get a bit of a branch coming off and coming up through here up to about there and branch off and remember I said I thought I had a bit of a flower there so I better stop when I get up to about there otherwise I've got a problem to deal with okay so that'll come up to here then it will arch out that way coming up and remember the knobbly bits I'll just let it go up in there it doesn't matter it doesn't have to make sense to me as long as it's got in there the elements that I'm looking for and because it's so strong that way I've now got that sort of design coming up through here that makes the actual flowers stand out and it has some reason I possibly could get up to this point here by coming up with this branch as well letting it branch up that way and just disappearing in the other thing that people don't do a lot is to get behind something so now I've come behind I've come in front and I've come behind and that's also giving you um, some depth into your artwork okay coming up to the top here now and so if I come out of there and I don't want to draw it and have it to be exactly as it is but there could be a branch coming up through here now and just a group of leaves coming off that out through there the leaves come off the branches they don't come off a group of leaves like roses where they come off together these are all coming off the trunk so that would have to be a branch coming up through there and then the leaves would come off those they sort of sit off the edge of that and come up through there and so that would give me the opportunity to get a leaf up in behind there further out here there'll be another one that will come up and arch out of that and so that would be another leaf coming out of the edge there and possibly here I could get a leaf coming out through there that sits off that that branch and coming back down this way so that would give me another leaf so I've got the group of leaves in through there so I can use the same brush and I've gone over to the burnt sienna and indethrin side here and I'll do it quite light because I don't want it too strong that just come in through there and get that branch going up through just let some water run through it and the water will make it lumpy uh, coming up through now I'll get more water on the brush because I want it to disappear slightly so now I'll wash the brush and just let that come out as nothing so now you can follow that for a little bit and come up through there if I tipped the page it would run along there and come out and make that just a little bit stronger okay so now I can actually add the leaves to that and they're green and they're quite that dark green so this one here would attach to the the branch there come out around and so now I can actually add part of the leaf that can touch that branch it's interesting if it does go over the top and that can come out through there with just the rough edge and I won't fill the whole leaf in I'll let the leaf actually just have light and dark on it just by the brush the this is sort of light out this side but what I'm going to do is add just a little bit of an indication of the um, serrated edge on that that'll come back round into the leaf and so that's all I'm going to do on those I could actually you don't see veins on them they're shiny so in that case I'm going to go back and get the shine back on the leaf by taking some out that will give me more of a shine on the leaf if I have some highlights on it <clears throat> okay the next leaf coming down round off the edge here becomes thicker arches around onto the leaf and I'll work the outside edge of the leaf with the pointed edge of the brush see if I can give it a little bit of a serrated edge not much and it's on dry so if I'm working on dry and on smooth paper I need to wet it pretty fast because that will just leave a back edge to the paint if I don't wet it fast that just left a dot of paint there don't care about that that can sit there and the other side so if I get the brush in a better point 
I could possibly get a little bit more of a serrated edge. Just a bit of a dab of the brush will do it. And just water down the edge. That'll force that out to the edges and just bring that out to a point. So I've got leaves that are showing up that are light and dark. They can have a darker part to the leaf if I pick up more of the green now and come down this side and just drop that in and put some yellow on top of it because it's very blue. That will give me that darker edge to the leaf. So you can see it a little bit clearer. You can't see much serrated edge there, so it's not that attractive. And again, the shiny part, wipe out some of that edge. Make this a little bit greener because it looks like it's not even painted. Got something on the brush. Okay, so some of the other leaves are not going to be as obvious as that. They're going to be leaves that are just shape. And so what I'll do is pick up the brush now. I better finish this one off. This one was attached to the branch there. It'll go behind this. And so that will be soft because I can't actually get out there. And I normally would turn it, but I'm not going to turn it. Get a darker leaf up through here and use water to get the rest of the leaf to go underneath that. Now if I go over the top of it, it'll make it too dark. Just part of that leaf just showing up through there. Again, that light edge. Okay, from there, I'm just going to put some colours on and just bits and pieces where there would be leaves that just show shapes. They might show a pointy shape. They might show something else. So up around here, I'm just going to get the brush down and do a shape as if there's leaves in behind there. That's just a shape. It's got nothing more than that shape. And so I've got some real sort of leaves over here and I'll come back to those leaves as well. And the other thing I've got is an imbalance of colour over here. So I need some colour down through here as well as probably some lighter colours coming out the one, two, three areas to make you look around the artwork. Uh, this side would be darker. So I can introduce even different colours for that reason. So that as I come in through there, I'll turn it around. Oh, no, I won't. Uh, it's going to be light colour. So I'm just going to wet the area with the brush. Could leave an edge in that. Just an area of colour. And so it's going to be soft. So I'll let the brush do its own thing to come out through here. And that will leave just an edge in it. Just an uneven edge. And it's got the very light green showing up through there. You can hardly see it. But when I add the colour you'll see it. And so I have the pink of the flowers but I'm going to come in with the yellow first and get that showing through the artwork that that yellow can come through but then it will change colour as it comes out so now if I put the pink in the yellow I'll end up with an orange and the pink was the um, bright rose so I'm putting that into it That'll get me a similar colour that I've used through the artwork. So I haven't just changed colours. Bring it out to the edge, tilt it and see what it does. It can only run where the paper's wet. That's the theory anyway. It's going to go out to that other part. Okay, that's as far as it's going to go there. Bring it back in to where I want it to be darker. And now I'll bring the green into it. And those brush marks that I made earlier, that's in blue. I still use those colours, so that won't hurt. Into here and just shapes out of that area. Probably a better shape for a leaf shape. And then I'll muck some of those up so that you can't see them exactly as they are. That comes into that colour. And so now you've got something that is just shape. 
probably a bit I don't mind the blue patch there I'll leave that okay so this could be darker in behind here now because that's where that dark is coming in through and out there so I'll add some of that into here get a new edge to that leaf I don't want to play down here too much maybe some in there just to bring it into the artwork otherwise it's not joined up with the artwork mm, got a play space there something I can play with and that would mean that I could bring something like a branch up through there something over the top of that and I'm just painting wet in wet so it's going to run it's not going to do what I'm telling it to do and it could come out that way so now it's got another branch that's appeared okay so the only thing I'm noticing very harshly is that blue spot in there so that may need to be softened later but I'll decide later there's a lot of decisions can be made later and what you're doing and so now I'll start the branches at the bottom and I'll use the square brush that I used before and just I'll forego that sort of shape that I did and I'll just wet into the top of that so that will make it disappear when it gets up here and so now I've got the same brush just a dirty grey from the colours that are here in the palette that you can see and start to get that on there in that'll run that'll run this won't and so what I'm doing is wetting it so I can play in that branch that'll go in behind which will stay softer and the darker one will go to the top I didn't finish that brush mark the pencil mark so now it's damp and I can play in the darker side of it which way too much water here in the palette uh, so I'll just get a grey colour which is the two colours together make a complete grey and now I'll see what I've got I've got a bluey sort of colour more brown that's not too bad and that's just in the darker side pick up the rubbish that's on the brush leave it to be rough this is the underneath side one so I'm doing that first that'll go up into the water and that one can go up then I'll just play in it just branches coming out that's the water coming back to face me so I'll actually run it back in this way and pick some up obviously there's too much there pick up some water okay so the branches are more in a brownie color so this one now is becoming browner don't forget the rubbishy bits the accent bits where you come in just add a little bit to that one as we come down and join otherwise we're not joined just let that go out to nothing remember this is the the front one and so that gets a little bit more information in it rubbish that goes out to nothing I'll let that go this comes up into that water and goes up there quietly separated and went into the water there <clears throat> so this side here is too blue so now I'm going to pick up water I've got water again and I'm just going to add some of the brown to it it definitely is a, a sort of a gray brown there's the color there and then I'll see what I've got now I'll let that dry and I can come back to it I don't want the star bursts at the end of it so I'll just take those off just get an interesting edge in the brown if it's going to stay there I'll make it interesting this one's a bit harsh but mm, I'll leave that for a while until I get back down to here this one here's got a little bit thick so that means that the one down here will have to be thick just make sure that comes past the other one but I can come back to that all right so now you're looking at the whole artwork um, as I said earlier it needs something out through here 
it's too light out through there. So I'll give it the same treatment as I did out here, but a little bit stronger. So I'll turn it to come out of there. And if you actually turn on your wrist, that's where you'll get a nice shape into anything coming out through there. If you're not sure, just actually give yourself a line to work on and have a look at it. And then I'll lighten it. Just lighten it so I can see it. But I always leave pencil on the work anyway. I'll use the square brush this time. That could be interesting. So I'll wet it out. Wet it out in that direction so I don't get edges in it. Um, I'll come in with the light green. Just let the light green do something with the brush. And then where that's joining up through there, I'll make it a little bit, oh, that's a lot darker. A little bit darker. Now I need light colours to come out. But I don't need yellow, so I'll start out with some pink. Still colours that I've used. A little bit of pink in shape. And now I'll get back into the darker greens and get those to come in. I'll probably turn it up the right way, seeing as I'm on a square brush. Just the blue over that. It's got a pink little section out there. I can leave that. That can come into here. Join up with that colour. Shape that leaf that's underneath there. got a dark spot in that it will pick up that spot that I've got so if I repeat that spot through there then that's going to make something interesting to look through the artwork so I'll put that out to this point of that leaf if I can I've tilted it to try and make it to go out to the end of that leaf which it's not doing it in a hurry and it may not if it's too dry out there it won't move so I'll move it back away the opposite way, that way, to soften it. Okay, so it's left a line on that. That's okay. Don't have a problem with that. But I do need to actually bring that through. And that's more of the indetherin colour, which is the blue. And I'll make some blue in the indetherin. I can even do it in the dark colour. And it's there, through here, I think there a little bit in through there I can soften that edge one two three that there will look like the one area if I added it down through here it will look like a stem or something in through there that's the blue again Those, so that'll join up together. One, two, three, four. Maybe down through here to get some strength at the bottom. Probably in about there. And then I'll let it go into where the leaves are. That needs to soften off and stop. Because if I keep going, I get out into this area and then get into trouble. Hmm, that's pretty. Very pretty, so I am going to go there. I'm going to let that blue go over that colour and it'll become a luminous in a purple. So maybe over this as well. Maybe over that pink and that'll make purple. So that's actually just bleeding. Don't mind that. This artwork's not something that's just straight painting. You can let things run. Um, you can change things. You can actually paint up the leaves if you want to. But I think it's interesting if it happens because once you start painting these, it changes. It doesn't look the same. The only thing I was planning to do was come up underneath that one because the centre looks to be going that way. Um, also, where something goes underneath, it should come out the same colour. So I'm just going to get the blue back in here. Just a little bit over that stem. That stem will go behind there if I put some dark in there. And so now you can't see where the stem starts and finish. Same with this one. It's just sitting there where it's not behind the actual petal. 
but if I do that it will make it look like it's behind finish that off and that just did a stroke just to get that to come up there and look like it's going along that one's a bit dark okay back to the actual branch that's down here I'll get a rigger actually a fine brush and add a little bit more to that so now I've got a rigger and I can play in that branch brown with some darks got some really strong darks now start and start I'll come up through the edge now I won't outline it everywhere because that will look really boring so what I'll do is wet it in places and let that go round the actual branch so you see some of it and then it disappears it becomes strong again in there and then disappears so now I've got water on that and now because I've got so much water on it I can actually paint with it and get other branches to come out from that and let them disappear that can stay on there that creates some interest on it the same here these branches are coming from the other side so they've got to disappear and it'll come down the side of this part to get that strength down into that section again the water can take it up through there and finish off that branch don't want to see the end of it so I'll bring the water back that makes it disappear put a knobbly section on it can't see this going over the top of that so I need that to have an edge on it to make sure that that one goes behind okay I've just brought the branches up through here and the branch on this side is still very very green so I'm just going to add some of the brown to that one so it matches the branches that are here otherwise they're not the same branch on the same tree so I'll just put a little bit of the dark along the edge there that can arch up there a little bit better so now I've got the brown up through here um, I can extend this down it looks a bit short to me but depending on what you actually want to achieve with it um, that one could be extended or I could actually do something with a border and make that a little bit shorter so that it doesn't look it does look short so if the answer is if it does look short then the the thing is that it needs to extend so I've just brought that down go back to the gray sort of color and just bring a little bit down with it and just get that to have a little bit of a interesting edge on it bring that down and extend it that way so that you've got something then coming down through there that extends that down and has the weight of this now the other thing I was talking about was to come underneath that and also I need to sort these two out so who's in front he's a little bit high he's not quite the center I didn't really want him as the main flower but that's where he's actually got to so depending on how you actually put a frame around this will depend on how that looks eventually okay so I'm just going to come back down and get some color and I'll use a smaller Escoda brush they're the synthetic Escodas um, it's a smaller Escoda and I'm going to start to do a couple of things that need to happen and they would be the center of these would need to be showing and I've actually got the under color already on there and I'm just going to bring some color around the center um, down around the center of that and I've just tilted the board and that stops because I've actually let it loose with water down here and taken that off and I don't do every leaf at the same time I've just spun that round and come back the other way with the edge to that leaf and that would leave just that little tiny vein in the center of that leaf so the brush is washed dried slightly and comes back in to leave that edge so now we've got a vein in the actual leaf 
I'll go back down a little bit closer so that you can see that. So now it's got a vein and I'll do this one here, the darker bluey green. It doesn't have to be very wet. It's a bit hard to control it if it's too wet. Um, how does this go? I could actually make this leaf go up that way and around. Wash the brush, dry it and bring the brush down and let that disappear. And so then I'll turn it round and get it back under that part of the screen and then that will leave this side will have a lighter edge that'll leave this light here if I come back up this way and get that vein showing up and then come back that's got paint on the brush come back here and let that disappear into the leaf so now you've got a vein on the leaf you don't see too many of the other veins on them. This one will come out from there straight out. Take out the back edge. And come back the other way. Come back this way. Now deciding which flower is over the top. This is the strongest flower, so I think he should go over the top, even though it doesn't quite look like it. I'll have to make it look like it is going over the top by coming back into here. That's one petal and drawing that up and then drawing up the other petal that's over that way. So if I could make it come over a little bit. No, that's too far. I went too far then. That'll come in there. Okay, so that has the um, rose, what is it, bright rose in behind. And they're over the top. Now, depending on the width of that one, there could be some green in there. It could be necessary to have some green. So that's the pink. So if I turn it back this way and have a look at this petal how big that is I could bring some green on the other side of it which would be somewhere in here I'll bring that round that way into some green to separate those two can still the green can still come into there and so now there's different parts of it now this was coming back in this way so I was going to put some pink in behind these. They need to be really clear. I don't think I need any green in behind there. I'll just let that become its own self because as I said, the more you do on these, the less value you've got in them. And I was going to put some pink in the back of in here underneath that because it looks like the actual hang on having a, having a push and shove here um, in underneath here to make it look like the center is going that direction so that's in the bright rose and that would come in behind here that would come around the the actual stamens I could leave some of the shape in that as well. That could be interesting to leave that line, that, that mark that I made in it so it's not just straight paint. And the same with it round here, that that would join up. Should look round. Take out the edges to start with and then see what I like and what I don't like. So I'll put it back underneath the camera and have a look. Mm, don't mind that. Could soften off there. So now it's going up underneath.
just having a look to see if there's anything else that I think I could actually do. There could be some leaves down through here so that you bring the green down through there. That's, um, that's something to think about. So what I'll do is just get a leaf coming back off this one. I think a leaf coming out of that one. That could bring the green further down. And so I've just got a chartreuse. I'll pick up some pink. I'll put all sorts of colours on this leaf. That branch can just disappear underneath there. Not very good on serrated edges with these brushes at the moment. That's pretty. And so now I'll just bring the green on one edge of it, just on this edge. And we'll get a rigger. Just show you that it's serrated, but I don't do serrations on every leaf. That'll go into a grey pink and it needs to attach to the branch. And to attach it to the branch, I'll just wet the branch and it'll just attach to it. It looks almost like a bud because it's pink. Mm, suit yourself. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, there's a few pencil lines that when it's dry, I'll rub out. A uh, mark on the paper. There's a mark on the paper here. And so I'll go down and show you the mark on the paper. And so I've got these erasers, magic erasers, and it's just a, um, a piece of eraser that you get in the supermarkets in the laundry aisle. And if I wet that, and I'm not sure what that mark is, but I wet it to start with and just let it sit there for a tick and then start to work in it and see if I can get it off. If I can't, I don't really want a signature there, but it's determined to stay, whatever it is. If I rub long enough and it starts to roll, that means that I'm removing the paper. I think I've gone about as far as I will go with it, actually. It's going to stay. It should have come off by then. There's a lot of pencil on there as well. Okay, so thanks for watching.